pretty good, thank you. I was calling just to ask a simple question because I was going through my jewelry box upstairs. And so I found from my ancient days ago that I had two silver dollars in there, and I didn't know exactly how much they go for these days. They've been like 19. Well, that's, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know offhand. Uh, I think yeah. probably it's close, uh, you know, if they uh, were maybe uh, something probably close to $20. Twenty twenty five dollars. Somebody would have to yeah, probably look it up. In that. Actually, I think they're around twenty six. Okay. Now that I think of it, because um, one of the companies has been offering uh, a copy of uh, G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Je- Jekyll Island, and for twenty five dollars, and including a silver dollar. So, mm. and, and they've said it's worth twenty six dollars. So. That's a pretty good deal, but the point is that that's probably what they're selling for. Okay, anything else, Debbie? Well, I think that'll do. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's go okay. to John, who's calling from Kansas. And again, our telephone number, one triple eight two four liberty one triple eight two four liberty or 464-8295. John, do you have a question or comment for our guest? Well, this is part of really enjoy your radio program, Dr. Stanley. We enjoy listening to Bob on the radio, although my wife tend to think he's a little depressing at times. Well, well, it is depressing, but uh, we have to tell you the truth, and hopefully people will, will get a little depressed, and maybe they'll start looking for answers, and hopefully they'll come to know the Lord. That's why we do what we're doing. But do you have a question at all? Uh, today I noticed that I just read in small print this morning that they quit producing the Zim, and I was just wondering if Bob had any comment on that. What did they quit producing? Uh, it said that the Zim was no longer in production as of this morning. What is what is the Zim? You have to tell me. Oh, you, he means the, the Zimbabwe dollar. Oh, this, okay, fine. Yeah, they're using foreign currencies now. The South African rand and the U.S. dollar as legal tender because their, their money is virtually worthless. And and if you do have a dollar and you pay for something, you get Zim change, and so that's not very good. Um, I lived there for three years, so I'm very familiar with the country. But um, that's the way countries go. And, and, and after that, uh, the next thing will be they'll only uh, transact in gold and silver in one form or another or barter. Well, I think the interesting thing about what really was happening in Zimbabwe is this is a direct experiment carried out by our State Department, by our elite. The Zimbabwean people, the people of Rhodesia, certainly did not want Mugabe, and he was not legitimately elected. He was forced on them by Henry Kissinger, who promised the Zimbabwe people of Zimbabwe, that, or of Rhodesia at the time, that if things ever got out of hand, America would come to their aid. America would make sure that they had rule of law and a democratic society. The people there actually elected a man named Bishop Mesueo. He was a black, a moderate, and uh, said he would have run a good society. There was good race relationships. It was certainly one of the most prosperous nations in all of Africa. They were a major food exporter for all of Africa. And the American government set out the State Department to Henry Kissinger and the cabal of trilateralists that he represented set out to destroy that nation. Now, the only reason that they've survived this long is because we've continued giving them money in the form of humanitarian aid. We criticize them, but we give them humanitarian aid. Who could be against humanitarian aid? And, of course, that humanitarian aid has been used then to finance Mugabe and the military and the police so they can keep their oppressive regime in power. And when they lose the elections, why they don't care, they just stay in power. They don't go. They don't believe in democracy. But uh, so the, the average American doesn't understand that we've been sending humanitarian aid to uh, Rhodesia, then Zimbabwe, and of course we have we have created this whole thing. I think it's sort of a ten plate uh, plan of what's going to happen in America. I just hope and pray I'm wrong. Any b- thoughts on that, Bob? Well, uh, I think when you see those kinds of things happen, I think it's part of and they do nothing to help these nations after it happens. I think it's part of their uh, uh, population pro- uh, uh, reduction plan. No, that's true. Uh, and, you know, you see this in Africa. Uh, you know, where do we see AIDS first? And now we have uh, in Nigeria uh, a polio epidemic. 
and uh, uh, you know the biggest killer in the world is uh, is um, malaria, and uh, they say no, you can't use DDT anymore because it it kills people, it's toxic, and and so these people quote are dying like flies, and they want that, and it's not only in Africa but it's in Asia and South America as well, and Central America. They just want to get rid of people, and so I think that's why. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe ended up uh, where it did, or as Rhodesia, when I lived there. And incidentally, the real culprit, uh, the bigger culprit than Henry Kissinger, was Lord Carrington. He was the one who did most of the uh, arrangements uh, for the handover. And um, and you're right, there was a struggle between uh, the Shona and the Matabele people, and the Shona went out, and that's how Mugabe got into power uh, with money and the shove from Kissinger. And really, of course, it, uh, I, the the lifespan in Zimbabwe was about 64 average. The average man would live to be 64 years of age. That was before America came in there to help them. Now the average man lives to 34 years of age. They have the AIDS epidemic. About 40% of the adult population is infected. Could have been stopped long ago. They did everything they could to block the implementation of effective public health approach to the epidemic. Bob's absolutely right. Anything else, John, before we let you go? Um, God, God bless. Thanks so much. Let's go to Dan, who's calling from Pennsylvania. Hi, Dan. Do you have a question or comment? Yes, I do, Dr. Stan. Uh, Bob, it was just announced here this past week or so that, you know, they're trying to uh, coerce 400,000 troops for a natural disaster, you know, it can be used in America. And National Guard in Pennsylvania here anyway, they gave all the National Guard uh, strikers and they sent them over to Iraq then. Let me, the question to you, Bob, is how is 400,000 troops on the street going to confront a million armed American citizens plus, and and with get away with it with modern modern military warfare and drones. Why you, you wouldn't have a chance against them? We never want to have an armed rebellion. But they, hang on, we'll be right back in. A Thanks for calling. Thank you, Doctor. Well, this is Doctor Stan Bob. Uh, we're just about out of time. Do you have a parting thought? Um, I rather think. Uh, there's going to be a lot of confusion and there's a lot of complaining uh, and uh, and a lot of uh, people saying, I'm not going to take those shots. And with all of the, the – but the way that things have been going so badly for the administration uh, with the health care thing, a terrible embarrassment, and cap and trades get starting to get wobbly in the Senate, uh, the rating on MRS Music for the president is like 44, maybe even lower – as you said, Congress is about 12, um, I think they might back off on this. And because there's been so much publicity concerning a possible bank holiday as a beta test to see what the public might do in that sort of a uh, situation, uh, I don't think uh, either of them may happen now because too many people know that this is a probability. And so I think we may we may be able to elude that, and I but I still think the dollar's coming down, and uh, that is not good for everybody. You're absolutely right. Well, we're out of time, Bob, and we have Elizabeth calling us from North Carolina. If Elizabeth wants to stay on the line, I'll be glad to talk to her when we get off the air. But right now, I'm going to have to let you go. We'll look forward to talking to you tonight. Bye-bye. I'll bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, fine. Bye. Well, this is Doctor.